Hello everyone and uh, thank you all for coming. Just wanted to have this uh, conference here in front of uh, the protector statue which says in honor of all who serve this community with pride. Um, as many of you have seen, we recently released information regarding how Nicholas Cherbalotti was declared ineligible to practice law by the Supreme Court of New Jersey. Since several journalists have reached out to our campaign asking us what this means and asking whether this is a big deal or some minor infraction, I'm here today to explain what this all means so that there is no confusion. What I'm about to say is not easy, as I take everyone's right to make a living and their freedom very seriously. Yet I am compelled to speak up, and those who are given political favor are not held accountable. I'm here to talk today about Nicholas Cherubilotti's pervasive and long-standing abuse of the public's trust. I know many are here to hear about Nick's suspension from the practice of law, and we will be focusing on that most of all. But I'm also going to be pointing out today several other failings of Nick that show the voters who this man really is. Each of these failures in judgment I'm about to explain alone should make someone unfit to serve you in the assembly, and surely all of them taken together do so. First, I uncovered last week that Nicholas Cherubilotti was declared ineligible to practice law, and he was banned from doing so by the Supreme Court of New Jersey in October of 2014. Several journalists have been hesitant to report on this, given the seriousness of the charge, so here is a copy of the order from Chief Justice Rabner himself. I have copies for everyone. So this, this order says, quote, it is ordered that pursuant to Rule 128A2D, the attorneys on the attached list are administratively ineligible to practice law for their failure to comply with Rule 128A in respect of the court's mandatory IOLTA program, effective October 27, 2014 and until such time as the IOLTA trustees report to the court that compliance with the rules and regulations of IOLTA have been established. End quote. It is an order issued by Chief Justice Stuart Rabner himself. This was taken from the judiciary's own website, so I'm not sure how more official you can get than an order from the Chief Justice from www.judiciary.state.nj.us. After we unearthed this information, Nick's campaign sought to downplay it, saying he simply forgot to renew his license and it was a minor issue and it was fixed quickly. Well, I also have in my hand here another order from Chief Justice Rabner from May of 2015, which is when Nick was finally reinstated and allowed to practice law again. Let me be clear. Nick was suspended from the practice of law in October of 2014 to May 2015. That is seven months of time. That is a long period of time, and to my understanding, Nick has been a partner at Senator Raymond Lesniak's law firm during this time. And in fact, this is not just my understanding, because his own personal financial disclosure form, which we also have for you, admits that he was paid by Weiner Lesniak during the year of 2014. It doesn't say for what, or how much, or when, but a non-lawyer cannot share fees with a lawyer. And Nick was not an eligible lawyer from October of 2014 to May of 2015. Neither Nick nor his employer will come clean on what he was doing during that time period, but a partner at a law firm is hired for one reason, to practice law. Nick's team is pretending this is no big deal and he's been telling others to say so as well. Well, let me tell you something. A direct order from the Supreme Court of New Jersey is a big deal. I honestly feel like I'm in the twilight zone sometimes because here's a candidate for public office who is seven months late and suspended from the practice of law and people want to know if it's a big deal? It's a big deal! I hear people saying, well, maybe it's because he forgot to file a form. Well, first of all, is it? Nick won't come clean and tell us. Second, how does that show that it's no big deal? That it was because of a form he did or didn't fill out? You file your taxes on a form. If you file those late, seven months late, or you file them wrong, is that no big deal? Lawyers are hired to file documents and forms correctly and on time. That is one of our most important charges, and I know that as a real lawyer. So third, why did it take him seven months to fix this? Would you want a doctor who lost his credentials cutting you open? I also uncovered just today that this same thing happened to Nick in October of 2012. He was suspended from October 2012 to May of 2013 as well. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want someone as my lawyer who didn't properly comply with the government's rules and court orders regarding how to properly register, hold, and account for client trust funds on a repeated basis. Fourth, 
I need to remind people that this isn't just a form with a name and address on it. This is a regulation that requires the reporting and proper registration of client trust funds. Nick was ordered by the Supreme Court to properly account for client trust funds he oversees, and he failed to follow the court's order for seven months. So is Nick crooked or lazy or both? Yet Nick is shuttled around behind closed doors and we have to piece together in the dark what's going on. We deserve answers of who is negotiating against and on behalf of the city of Bayonne for important deals that will affect all of our futures permanently. During this time, when he was suspended of the practice of law, he was a partner at Weiner Lesniak. Again, what is a partner at a law firm hired to do if it isn't legal work? I want to be clear also, this story is not just about the stain of haphazardly maintaining accounts in compliance with regulations. There is a seven month gap here, people, for which it appears Nick almost certainly was performing legal work, but was banned by court order from doing so. So why is Nick a partner for this law firm? What was he made a partner to do? Not practice the law? Come on. Like I said, this alone should be concerned enough for the people to conclude that Nick is not qualified to be or capable to be their assemblyman when he repeatedly does not respect the orders of the New Jersey Supreme Court, yet there is much more. Nick's disclosure form also shows that he was paid last year by a company called Magus Strategies. But what is Magus Strategies, you ask? Well, it's a consulting firm whose website has since been conveniently deleted from the internet. It's a consulting firm that Nick ran, or does he currently still run it? I don't know, because again, he won't tell us, with former Mayor Joe Doria. Firstly, I'd like to point out this horrible conflict of interest. Nick is simultaneously a partner at a politically connected law firm and also a principal at a consulting firm that seeks government business. When is Nick a consultant? When is Nick a lawyer? When is Nick a lobbyist? Good questions. There are no answers to these questions. And I'll tell you why there are no answers. Because Nick does what Nick has to do to get paid. And if he needs to call himself a lawyer, he'll do that. And if he needs to call himself a consultant, he'll do that too. And if Nick needs to lie to the people on the Magus Strategies website and pretend that he attended Harvard, Nick will do that also. All right, well, I attended Princeton. I lived there for four years, and in 2008, I graduated with a degree in economics. Nick attended Harvard the way I attended Harvard when I visited my brother there for a weekend, because my brother did attend Harvard, and he graduated from Harvard. Nick pretends he went to Harvard because he's trying to convince people to pay him money because he's a powerful and sophisticated guy who can get the local government to do whatever he wants. That's why he inflates his credentials. That's why he partners with a former mayor. Consulting? This is influence peddling. And this is why he has this consulting firm, Magus Strategies. And if everything was on the up and up, I wonder why this website disappeared out of existence a couple months ago. Unfortunately for Nick, we have snapshots of all this before he could cover his tracks. And we've already put this up on the internet for everyone to see. Yet, Nick's moral failings do not stop here. Don't worry, there's only a couple more minutes. Nick's longtime former boss, our sitting senator, is under indictment for corruption and trading government favors for personal benefit. Many of you in the media know that Nick was the state director for this man for several years. And many of you in the media also know, probably, that Nick's name is often discussed on the short list of people who know what happened and what didn't happen behind those closed doors. Nick was front and center of this corruption scam. Voters should know whether he's been asked by the Department of Justice or anyone else to be a part of this investigation. If so, what was his involvement? Again, no answers. Nick says he wants to serve us, yet he profits off of our community behind closed doors, lies about his credentials and qualifications, and can't even keep himself in good standing as an attorney. This is the trend of moral, moral failing of which I speak. This is Nick Cervellotti's record, a dirty pipeline under our city. By the way, a developer accident, accidentally busted open a water main doing construction yesterday. Imagine if they had busted into his pipeline, okay? failed development deals and lawsuits all over the military ocean terminal from Nick's time at the BLRA that cost us tens of millions of dollars in tax abatements to his developer friends. And now more sweetheart deals for politically connected developers. Nick gets paid every time and the people of Bayonne foot the bill. People out here are wondering why everything is so run down, yet taxes are so high. Open your eyes, folks. It's because the people in charge are putting their own self-interest above you, the taxpayers. Just yesterday, a recreation director from West New York and two other employees pled guilty to stealing over $100,000 of the people's money. I don't need to remind people that we inherited West New York's amazing business administrator after he left a trail of arrests and indictments behind him. Oh, and this man is also helping Nick run his campaign. The list goes on. Nick was involved in a situation at the Astor Place Festival in August when threats were made in my life. Nick dragged Glenn Cunningham's and our Senator Sandra Cunningham's name through the dirt when he created a Perverts for Cunningham smear campaign. 
Nick participates in closed door meetings with our own mayor while the mayor conducts official and private business. This too, in violation of law, by the way, it's called the Hatch Act. It's illegal for a partisan candidate to be provided inside information and access from an elected official. And then Nick issues press releases pretending he did something. Check his website out, you'll see it. But people deserve better than a wannabe like Nicholas Cherubilotti for the assembly. Mr. Cherubilotti has a lot to answer for. I think it is incumbent upon everyone here to start asking questions about what Nick was doing to pay the bills for himself and his family from October 2014 to May of 2015. Because if he did any practicing of the law, that's in violation of a direct order from the Supreme Court of the state of New Jersey. And if he didn't do any practicing of the law, well, I don't know what Ray Lesniak's paying him for then. And that's a question that needs to be answered either way. So thank you. <coughs>